All right, guys, today we're going to tie a fly with a wool head. Actually, it's a dubbing head, which makes it kind of a unique technique, and that's more what I'm into are showing techniques, and you can incorporate those in any way you want. This is not a really a specific pattern. Nonetheless, I've tried doing this video three times, and I talk too much every time over the 15 minutes that I can get it on YouTube, so let's try without talking so much. Uh, the first thing is it's a B10 stinger hook, Gamagatsu, love them. Long shank, extra fine, super razor sharp. This is a number one. I just think that it has the right size. The hook uh, thread always hangs down at the point of the hook. That's where the bend of the shank usually starts. So if you have a reference point, your hook thread hanging down at the point is usually about as far back as you want to go. The next step is tying in the tail material, which you can incorporate anything you want. Um, I'm partial to thin raccoon. Certainly, uh, zonker strips work real well. In that case, I use a magnum zonker strip, but I'm just using some fin raccoon right now because I like the aesthetic quality and the amount of movement and breathability that it has. So I'm just tying a clump of fin raccoon, pull out any under fur, leave the guard hairs in. They got a nice kicking action at the back of the fly. They extend out a little bit further. Next, for some flash, I'm going to tie in some pearl flashaboo. I like for it to extend back about as far as the back of the fly so that it has the tail effect as well. Going to throw in a little mono anti-fouling loop on here just to keep the fly from having a tendency to want to foul. Just making sure you get all your materials. I typically would tie it on top and pull the material through. In this case, as you can see, the material being so fine would be difficult to do that with, so I'm just going to tie it just directly underneath of the material and uh, just tie it off. I've got sharp scissors, I'll just cut the end of it. So that's the tail. And now I'm going to begin a graduation process from longest to middle to short with the head being the final step just to create a nice profile. So the next step is I'll take some Arctic Fox that I cut off a patch. I'm going to attach it to the side of the fly here and kind of roll it with my thumb and index finger to give it a good wrapping around that particular side of the fly. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side of the fly. Take a clump and just simply place it on the side and kind of roll it with my thumb and index finger. The, the material here where we're tying it really isn't that important. I wouldn't be freaking out about it being seen. It's certainly not. So I've got my longer material, my middle material, and uh, one of my favorite color combinations is chartreuse and white when it comes to just about any type of fly. So we're going to start the chartreuse portion now. Doing the same thing, I'm going to take a little bit of Arctic Fox off of a patch. This one I'll actually cut down a little bit just so it continues that graduation process from longest to short from the back to the front of the fly, rolling it around the side and the bottom of the fly on that particular side of the hook. And then doing the same thing on my side, taking a clump. I'm going to cut it just a little bit for length, and I'm going to place it on the side and kind of roll it so that it fills in the gaps around the side. And then just kind of make sure everything looks kosher there which it does so that's basically my tail extending out with the fin raccoon and flashaboo the middle being the arctic fox and the chartreuse arctic fox and now i'm going to finish up the basic body with uh, a shalopin feather on a shalopin kick i like the marabou base with the stiffer barbules for the collar so basically i'm going to tie in and palmer a hackle no different than I would any other hackle. The difference with shalopin is, first of all, you get a really nice marabou base. Which can, it continues that nice transition. But unlike a traditional hackle, a strong Chinese hackle, the barbules are very spread out. And they're not going to cause this fly to want to suspend or to float like a sea deucer or some other type of palmered hackle fly. It's just for an aesthetic characteristic, which is laying down the length of the fly. It's creating a nice tapering effect, which all bait fish have. Everything looks good, so all I'm going to do is just wrap back over this stuff a little bit with some loose wraps to hold everything in a backwards position there. So overall, you know, we've got a nice 
body going so far I like the collar combination now the unique aspect of these flies are the heads are going to be made out of Senyos laser dub the, the dubbing material actually is the perfect length when you pull it off in a hank the benefit of dubbing over traditional materials to make heads is the color palette that you can choose from is pretty much endless dubbing comes in such an array of colors that you would never find in traditional saltwater materials that adds a lot of different looks that you could never achieve so all I'm doing is taking out medium sized hunks placing them evenly over the hook shank tying off in the middle two or three times to secure it and then just pulling back like I would deer hair or something else if I were going to pack deer hair and I do typically pack this really tight I want to form a nice dense head so we're just packing this on, evenly spreading it out over the shank of the hook, two or three wraps, pulling the material back, tying off in front, and then packing. So basically we've got a nice head started there. Now we could t continue to do that. We could just pack two more times probably and have a nice head, but we're going to do something a little different, something to add a little flavor to the fly. We're going to put on some small bead chain eyes, extra small probably is more accurate to the size. Just figure eight them on there. Just to give this fly a little bit of weight, I'm going to pack these back. I didn't leave enough space by the eye of the hook because I really need to get a little more material in there. So now I've got some eyes on there just to give this fly a little bit of weight. I'm going to put another good medium sized dollop of the Sinios laser dub in here. Fill in that gap right there by the eye of the hook. Same thing we've been doing. This one's going to be a little more difficult because you're going to have to make sure you pull everything out of the eye of the hook there. So you just got to manipulate it till it looks like it's going to work. And then you can kind of use your thread to hold everything back. And we're just going to pack that last one and make sure we got enough room for a weed guard. So we've got a nice, dense, packed head. The Senyos Laser Dub gives you a nice, it won't have any holes in the head. It packs real good. The color combination is excellent. So all I'm going to do now is come through and pick out the dubbing and kind of get out any of the fibers that would have gotten tied down in the stacking process. Loosen those up so we can get as much of that out and get a good looking head as possible. And at the same time, I'm going to expose these lead eyes my ADD personality will not allow me to just look at these lead or B chain eyes they don't have an aesthetic quality so what we're gonna do is something a little different here that maybe we've never done before is we're gonna cover those B chain eyes with uh, some actual 3D epoxy eyes so it's gonna give us an aesthetic quality it's gonna give us a large profile for when we trim the head and overall it's going to make the fly look better. Certainly you could fish this fly exactly how it looks right now. Normally I'd use hot glue for this but I forgot to plug my hot glue gun in so we'll make do. I want to go ahead and pull the eye off and get that ready. Put a little bit of Zappa Gap on there. It doesn't matter if it gets on the material because as I push it down I'm going to catch it basically use my scissors to kind of hold it in place until it adheres right there. I'm going to come on the other side. Once again I would prefer to use hot glue but in my haste to do this video I neglected to plug my hot glue gun in so therefore we're using Zappa gun. Which at the end of the day I'm not sure how much of a difference. It certainly won't hold as well but from a standpoint of showing you how to tie a fly I think it'll work. Then I'm going to come over here and make sure my eyes are where I want them correctly on there. And Before I start trimming, I'm going to go ahead now and make sure all the material is out of the way. I'm going to whip finish this off. Unfortunately that whip finish did not take. So let's try this one more time. Kind of not trying to catch any of the materials. There we go. So now the head, everything's done. The trimming process can take as little or as long a time as you want. I'm going to try and make it simple so I don't run over in time again. But I usually make one straight cut down the top. 
one straight cut down the bottom and now I can come and fine tune it by just kind of turning the fly and trimming off just minimal amounts at a time as I begin this process. I don't want to cut too much. I can always take more off. So overall, the shape of the fly is pretty, pretty done here. We've got a good all-round shape. We got what appears to be a decent head. Everything. I mean, I can trim this more, but I'm afraid the more anal I get about how this looks, the time on the video will run out again for the third time. So without, not. I mean, I don't want to make it unappealing it looks all right I would probably trim this a little more the one thing I'm going to do now that kind of a little trick of the trade I guess is I'm going to put some red thread on here to uh, attach my weed guard the reason I'm using red thread now is that it'll help denote the weight that is underneath of the eyes so anytime I see a red thread weed guard I know that that fly has dumbbell or bee chain eyes even though I can't see them that's what the red thread is doing for me it's helping me remember that this particular fly as opposed to some that I don't use bee chain on has weight so anytime I see a red one if that's the weight that I'm looking for I know that it's there well, I'm lucky enough to have somebody working with me today so we can get that phone call all right, so we've got our weed guard on. I'm just going to come up and manipulate it a little bit. For all intent and purposes, it looks exactly where I would want it anyway. Just kind of about the length of the fly. And once again, you can sit here and trim this as much as you want. But the idea is that we're incorporating a traditionally like freshwater material in a saltwater application and you can use a million different variations of this. I mean this certainly isn't the only application. The dubbing material for the head on this. Well, whatever. Anyway, there's the gist of the fly. You could sit here. I would have probably trimmed this a little more. But overall, very effective fly. A nice head created from a dubbing material. Very movement oriented tail. A nice transition when this gets wet from you know, small to medium in the middle to, you know, small again in the tail, a nice tapering effect, which most bait have. And then the weight underneath of it gives it a little more uh, versatility. It's not just a super, super shallow water fly. So incorporating the eyes, covering them for aesthetic purposes, it gives the fly a very wide profile. The fly now has some width to it as opposed to being real narrow. And uh, just a little bit of zap on the... Uh, thread wraps to finish it off and that would be it my friends so good luck tying I hope this works out for you certainly there's a million variations that you could use this uh, type of material for and I hope you come up with some creative ideas thank you